Let's watch instead. Friend of the show. Well, not really, but I wish one day. Paolo! And a bullet train. Shinkansen bullet train service is made in Japan. All right, y'all, I'm back with another Made in Japan, and this time I get to show you how train service is truly made in Japan. The people at JR Tokai have given me access to this place. I already did one on their factory, and now we're here in Oikichi, Tokyo, so I'm super excited for this one. But if you guys want to see what I'm doing on the daily, definitely check out my Instagram account. If you want to help support the channel, then check out... Bro, I want to see where they're pooping. Okay, I want to see the bathrooms in the Shinkansen. My Japan merch, and if you have any questions about Japan or your Japan travels, check out my Discord community. All right, let's go do this. So here we go again. This one is for my Japan train lovers, as we're at the JR Tokai Okichi Shinkansen Bullet Train Depot, where routine train inspections and repairs take place. And yup, I'm the first YouTube content creator to visit this spot too. Dating back to 1964, Let's JR go. Tokai Shinkansen has been safely transporting passengers between Osaka and Tokyo, resulting in the busiest train line in Japan. And all this wouldn't be possible without the Oikichi Shinkansen Train Depot, ensuring that every single train is operating at peak oh. performance in all requiring 1400 skilled jr tokai workers oh look how they're cleaning that bad boy all happen and i'm taking Ooh. you inside to show you how even their regular train maintenance and service uniquely earns a spot in my made in japan series so if you guys saw the last video you guys might have noticed that i had some issues with my glasses and fogging but this time we've upgraded check this out there you go, built-in helmet goggles. Let's do this. King. Now that I've got my hard hat on, let's do this to this. This is pretty amazing. Look at all of these trains. I never thought I'd be this close to this many Shinkansen trains. And to be clear, this place is quite different from my previous video on the JR Hamamatsu train factory, where they perform complete annual overhaul inspections, while at this train depot, they perform more routine inspections and maintenance as frequently as every two days. So I've made it just above the trains, and look, there's some guys over there, let's see what they're doing. Oh, that's the pantograph. It collects power for the train when it makes contact with the overhead electrical line. Each Shinkansen has two of them mounted on its roof. Critical components to keep the train powered so it must be inspected thoroughly. Oh, and this maintenance itself requires two skilled workers, one repeating the other's inspection to ensure that there are no mistakes. Okay, I think they should limit that to one. That's redundancy. Uh, immediately, I'm putting my McKinsey hat on and seeing that that's a redundancy that could be eliminated there's no reason for uh double the amount of quality control have you thought about how much more quality control you could do with just one person uh no that's not going to work for me okay that's two people with benefits packages not going to work out Cool, I guess they're performing a torque inspection on all the bolts right now. And the part which directly makes contact with the electrical wire generates so much friction that it needs to be replaced regularly. Excuse me, what are you doing? Nice, so it's possible for the train to run without the pentagraph? Ah, how much electricity runs through the lines? And what do you like most about this job? Oh, thanks. Wow, everyone here is so busy at work. Let's go ask what that guy's doing over there. Hi, what's going down here? Hi. Oh, how long have you been doing this job? So what was the toughest part when you first started? Thanks. So this section is where the undercarriages are routinely inspected. There are a hundred total items that need to be checked by the workers, such as the wheels, axles, and brake systems. 
Wow, check out all the marks everywhere. Looks like a bad day for a school essay. But for this Shinkansen, it means that each specific part has passed inspection. Huh, there's some stairs over here. Let's see where it goes. Dude, it's so clean. It's like insane. I'm going, I'm losing my mind. Oh, I think I've stumbled into their skills training room. Let's talk to this guy. Hi, what's got you all twisted? Interesting. So how often do you need to do this type of skills training? Ah, uh, I see. So do you need to pass a test or something to work on your own? Okay. Have you ever failed the test? Got it. And what's been the most challenging for you in the training? Everyone's、cool. I try? So apparently, if you hit them, it's gonna actually be a different sound. So I think this one is loose right here. Wow, the noise is completely different. Every year, all new hired workers must undergo one month of training here and completely pass the in house skills test before they're allowed to work on the Shinkansen. Makes sense considering that 450,000 passengers every day ride this bullet train, so safety in all respects is paramount to its operation. <laughs> So before we continue on, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you watch any of my videos, you know I love using Squarespace as the number. I'm just saying, uh, all I'm seeing is uh, everyone avoiding cost efficient, uh, you know, cost prevention uh, methods here. Way too much training, way too bloated of a workforce. Don't need to, don't need to do most of these things. Okay. It's cutting into、This、their bottom line. It's cutting into their profits.、Uh, disrespectful. Cool. Let's see what's going on in this building. Oh, wow. Look at this place. There's two Shinkansens right there. And I think that's the newer one. Let's go find out. Hi, do you know anything about this train? Perfect, but first, how long have you had this job? And what were you doing before this? Okay, so what's the latest features on this Shinkansen? ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、ここ、
features to enhance passengers' comfort and experience. For example, the digital screen is one and a half times larger, which helps display more passenger information. Also, the passenger compartment lights up overhead just before arrivals to help remind passengers to take their bags. In the green car, which is their business class carriage, the seats are installed with a fully active vibration suppression system for a more comfortable ride. Reading lights are 70% wider, and just like the economy seats, the bottom cushion lowers as the back seat reclines. Anyway, the list goes on. At the end of the day, it's just an overall better experience. It looks like these guys are about to start cleaning the train. Wow, this is some serious washing going on. Apparently, one Shinkansen travels at more than 3,000 kilometers a day at speeds more than 300 kilometers per hour, about 186 miles per hour through all weather imaginable. So it's no surprise that it picks up a bug or two on its windshield along the way, which ultimately requires a team of skilled washers to thoroughly and regularly clean the. Look drain. at how well they're cleaning that this bad is boy. This pretty cool seeing them wash the Shinkansen. So what's good? So how often do you do this? I see. In this section alone, what gets the dirtiest? Oh, these guys are washing the lead car. Apparently, the lead car requires the most attention since it gets the dirtiest during travel, especially at night as the bugs are drawn to the headlights. Rather, quite a difficult removal process which requires a deep clean each and every time. Dude, this is like, I can't be alone in this, right? Like, this is kind of sexual. I mean, I don't know if it's supposed to be or not, but I'm feeling sexy watching this, okay? I mean, this is like, how does it not get you going, dude? How do you not feel this in your loins when you fucking watch this beautiful machine, this behemoth that transports thousands of people every fucking day? So clean. Oh. Damn, that's a long brush. I guess it's a must when working with these massive trains. And of course, they also... Bro, it's like already clean. You know what I mean? They're cleaning it, but it's like already clean. This is literally the cleanest train in America before they cleaned it. There is not a single fucking train car that is this clean in the United States of America right now. I've never seen this shit, dude. I've never seen anything like this. Fuck. I get jealous and frustrated. I mean, I do too, a little bit. Pretty fucked up when you think about it. Also have to wash the undercarriage. In the 50 year history of the Shinkansen, not a single onboard fatality due to collisions or derailments. Stomp. So hot. God damn, dude. Perfect, now the Shinkansen is ready for its photo shoot. I mean, if it were to take a photo shoot, it's ready. That said, let's see what else we can explore. Like, if I was a Mr. B style content creator, I'd like fly a bunch of these guys to America to inspect and try to clean, like, uh, just the average New York City train car. You know what I mean? They'd probably die, so then I'd have to also pay for their funerals and stuff because, like, they would literally have a seizure and fucking have an aneurysm from seeing how awful the system is. They would just be like, no, 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 this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Okay, so here, the workers need to drain the train's toilet tanks and refill the clean tanks with water for washing hands at the sink and flushing toilets. In total, about 4,000 liters of water is used for one train, and all of these tasks happening behind the scenes by dedicated workers to ensure that passengers have the most comfortable ride possible. Imagine a PR you would get for killing 100 Japanese train engineers. Yeah, that's right. That's true. I would get destroyed. 
Oh yeah, and since the Shikansen is 400 meters, about 437 yards long, the workers regularly ride bikes to perform their tasks. Now it's time for the interior cleaners to get to work. Like, what are they cleaning? Like, I'm looking at the train and it's like, what are you guys cleaning? It seems so clean already. I've never seen anything like this. I would lick the crust off of that fucking ground, dude. I don't even give a shit. Each cleaner is assigned to one carriage, completely cleaning it in about 30 Like, to I feel like those were placed so they could at least... Look, they literally... Those are, like, suspiciously placed right there. They planted garbage. Like, this doesn't even make sense. What the fuck is that? They 100% planted that, bro. carriage completely cleaning it in about 30 to 40 minutes and i don't know about you but for some reason watching the entire train get cleaned is so soothing it is it fucking is paolo oh wow they're using a specialized brush with integrated moisture detection it allows the cleaners to quickly check if anything has spilled on the seats in fact three out of the 13 tools used by the cleaners were actually invented by them including this one so what's the hardest place to clean oh on my train? god stop dude it's yet another fucking instance where yet another instance where the workers know better than the fucking management see People always literally, people always fucking act like uh, workers don't know shit. They're cleaning all the salarymen tears. Yeah, if you killed that many Japanese, I'm pretty sure you'd sink below Logan Paul and no one's done that before. Yeah, maybe I'd have his career. Yeah, they're going to be after cleaning my... <laughs> they're going to have to clean my moisture off the fucking planes after the trains, after I'm done with this. Ah, and how do you clean spills on the seats? By the way, what's the most interesting lost and found item you've ever come across? そんなにないんです。落とし物って携帯とかメガネとかタオルとかそういうものしかこっちには入ってこなくて、ちょっとびっくりなものっていうのは多分東京駅の方だったらあると思うんですけど、こっちは基地なので珍しいものっていうのは
So I'm here at the JR Central Hamamatsu Workshop, aka Train Factory. It's the one and only location in Japan that conducts a complete overhaul inspection that fully disassembles, repairs, and reassembles the Tokaido Shinkansen bullet trains, the most popular and busiest train line in Japan. It started as a repair shop in 1912 for steam locomotives, and over time as technology evolved, so did the workshop, servicing trains across the ages from electronic locomotives, electric trains, and now Shinkansen. Today, there are a total of about 1,300 hardworking JR Central staff and affiliated workers who come together at the workshop to ensure that all of their Shinkansen trains are operated at peak performance and safety. And what do you know, I'm the first YouTube content creator to ever visit this workshop, so we're going Shinkansen long with this one. Alright, so I've made it inside, but today I think I'm going to be wearing something a little bit different. Let's see what I'm going to wear. There you go, let's go inside of the factory now. So I've got my helmet on, time to find the trains. You're wearing the same thing. Hi, can you show me inside? Wow, the Shinkansen workshop is so massive, and why I want to call it a train factory or even train maintenance plant to better capture its scale. The entire property is about 318,000 square meters, just over 78 acres. Oh, there's a Shinkansen coming into the plant. Right oh, after the look train at how arrives, good it goes through its first inspection and diagnostic, which determines what types of extra maintenance and service is required. Look how sexy that thing looks so pulling in, in dude. Yeah, let's see what's going on here. That's a big boy. What a beaut. After the initial inspection, the train is ushered into the Mai Sagyoba, pre-maintenance area. A Shinkansen train usually consists of 16 carriage cars, but coming into this area, it's already been separated into four stripped-down carriage cars. In order to maintain and service the Shinkansen, the workers must take it apart section by section and then piece by piece, as each must go through a strict and rigorous inspection process. This requires for each piece to be transported to various areas of the plant so different teams can work on the different sections simultaneously. Hence, the requirement for so much space. In fact, the workers are divided into four teams, body, parts, undercarriage, and inspection, and each worker required to master a unique set of skills for their section before being allowed to service the train. Oh, they're disassembling the seats now. It seems like there's a lot for them to do. In fact, there's so much work that takes place in the Maya Sagyoba that it requires about 60 workers to finish one carriage. Wow, everything's gone. So I'm inside of the train right now and you can see that it's all taken apart. It's pretty awesome. Do they do this in America? Like, I doubt it, dude. I mean, maybe they do. I'm sure they do it in America, too. They inspect the trains like this, right? Maybe not like the daily commuter trains like these ones, but... It just seems insane. It's definitely not New York. Now, I'm not talking about MTA, okay? I know... They don't even have, like, I'm, I'm talking like the Long Island uh, uh, Railroad, you know what I mean? Like, the LIRR, that one has, like, more expensive seats and shit. Oh, cool. Let's go see what's up here. Yeah, every minute a train is parked, a million dollars of unrealized profit is lost. Exactly. Fuck. So I'm just above the train right now. I climbed the stairs and you can see it's a little bit dirty, but by the time it gets out of here, it's going to be polished and cleaned up. Ooh, I want to see that. Once the four carriage cars have been stripped, they're individually separated and moved to the dismantling warehouse. So I think I've just arrived a little bit early, but the train should be coming here and they're going to separate the body and the wheelbase. In I like the Long Island the Railroad. The it was very tracks, pleasant. They're attached to powerful orange vehicles called train pullers, which can pull up to four carriages at one time. Oh, and that's a traverser, which moves the trains from one warehouse to the next. Damn, I don't know what it is though, but for some reason, watching a Shinkansen moving laterally is so mesmerizing. Depending on the warehouse location, the entire moving process could take up to 15 minutes. To say the least, it's a massive effort to move these train cars, so it's always performed slowly and cautiously to ensure safety of all of the workers. The Hamamatsu Workshop Factory works on up to four Shinkansen at one time. In fact, they inspect and repair about 50 Shinkansen, 800 carriages each year. At the CTA. 
Okay, wait, hold on. Let's look at this Safety real quick. And reliability are top priority like inspections and maintenance work that is done to keep each train car in good working shape. Cars and their onboard systems are thoroughly checked for function and passenger comfort before they go into service. In this behind the scenes video, we'll explain the inspections, repairs, and troubleshooting measures we take to keep you safe and our fleet rolling. My name is Devin Wilkes. I'm a Rail Maintenance Manager 1. And what I do is annual inspections on 2,600 cars. Annual. They do the inspections annually. I mean, did they say, did, did Paolo say that they were doing it annually too? My name is Arthur Scales Sr. My title is RTO. Before train operators leave the terminal, they perform a series of pre-checks on their train before departing, including walking the train to look for issues inside or outside each car, including any issues. Bro, there's no, it's like a joke. It's like a joke. I'm sorry. No disrespect to the wonderful people that are working in this, uh, in this uh, field, but that's, bro, he just, he just gave it a fucking gut check, dude. He, oh, come on. He just walked through it and was like, all right, <laughs> where's the little hammer, man? Why aren't they disassembling them? We look at them versus disassemble them completely. Why is he not taking every part apart? The fuck's going on? Choose with signs, lights, doors, temperature, cleanliness, or vandalism. If I'm a rail operator and I'm starting my shift, I will go to my head car and I will key up my rail car and look at what are my safety things. I will check my windshield wipers. I will make certain that my headlights are working. I will check my exterior lights along the side to make certain that they are illuminating and going out. I will cycle my doors from this car to make certain that they, all the doors in the consoles are opening and closing on both the cab side, the non-cab side. Our fleet started in 1981 which make that car wait that's literally a 37 year old train car that they're still working with god damn uh 37 years old today and although we try to do a lot of things to keep these trains running to keep the doors operating properly i mean to be fair like that's one good thing about trains is that like you don't need to fully you don't need to fully modernize it or anything i mean it still goes You can use it for a good, you can use it for a very long time. You had a car that was 37 years old. On each car, we have two PIUs, passenger intercon units. If a rider gets on a hot car in the summertime or a cold car in the wintertime, all you have to do is go and punch that button and I will take care of that problem. If I come back there and I can't get heat in that car, I'm gonna evacuate that car so nobody will get on that car. An operator will do is calling control and reporting it cool. as a defect. And at the next I love opportunity him. to pull this car off the road, that's what we're gonna do. Bring it in the shop and inspect it and make it safe for our guests. In addition to the things that we do when the cars come into the shop, uh, rail engineers determine um, what type of overhauls we need to do um, based on trends that we see, based on wear and tear of the vehicles. Uh, for example, we change out the wheel assemblies probably every six months because the wheel constantly grind down as they're riding on a running rail. And so wheel, wheel assemblies are changed out. Uh, we look at the control groups and see that if the switches are defective, if the wiring inside of the group are constantly burning and decaying, we do an overhaul to maintain the safety and efficiency of these fleets. What we do on these cars is what's called periodic inspections and annual inspections. And an annual inspection is a more of a surgical procedure where we are dropping trucks, we are looking in between things that you just can't see on a normal basis. We take eight hours to look at one car to make certain that it is safe, it is replenished, and it can go out for service. The number one thing that CTA 
tries to implement and instill in everyone that works here is safety. We take safety to the highest level at CTA. We will never, ever release a car that we know that is unsafe for our customers. Our trains travel about 230,000 miles, about seven times the circumference of the Earth at its equator. On a typical weekday, year-round, and the talented and well-trained people in yards, shops, terminals, and who operate service are why this is possible, even with some of our cars nearing 40 years of age. In addition to the continual work we do to prevent and mitigate... When I hear eight hours, I think that's seven hours too long, okay? I'm just saying, why eight hours when you could do it in one? You know what I mean? Like uh, annually, maybe why not, uh, you know, once every two years? I'm just saying. Delays and innovate new strategies to keep our trains rolling. We're also making historic investments in the system, including replacing old rail cars with new ones. We've also added the recent 5000 series, which replaced nearly half our fleet and a new 7000 series. Is I heard this one's nice, right? In 2020. By the way, this is the 7000 series and even their like latest and greatest is still ugly as fuck and nowhere near the level of comfort you're going to get. I mean, I, I guess it's fine. It's all right. This is an old video. It's four years ago. Now that the carriage is safely secured inside of the dismantling warehouse, a new team of workers can start their tasks. First, the entire train carriage is raised up via specifically designed lifts to allow for safe undercarriage access. These powerful machines can lift a train that weighs up to 40 tons, about two and a half meters high. Let's go talk to that person. Hi, what are you doing? Hi, lifting So what's your favorite thing about this entire process? Shinkansens are not commuter trains. They're used for long distance travel. Big distinction to make, by the way. Yeah, I, get, I understand. Thank you. I want to know what the... Like what are what are the daily commuter trains inside of the cities look like in Japan? They probably look similar to the 7000, right? Once fully lifted, the workers begin to separate the train body from the undercarriage as well as the removal of underfloor equipment. Again, all these sections and parts are destined for a separate warehouse in the plant. And what's truly amazing course, about this process is how much, even with such a massive scale transportation vehicle like a Japanese bullet train, is performed by worker technical skill and hand. Each worker though is required to engage in a two and a half month training program at the start of their career, culminating into a strict in-house test certification that must be passed, plus any additional training and licenses for jobs like a crane operator, ultimately facilitating an efficient and safe working environment. Damn, look at that train puller go! It guides the undercarriage into this orange undercarriage traverser, which automatically transports them into a neighboring warehouse for inspection and maintenance. After the undercarriage has been detached, the workers focus on disassembling the electronics and other equipment under the carriage. This is a critical part in the process as the workers must be diligent in taking inventory of all the parts removed to ensure- They're censoring that bad boy, you know what I mean? They don't want us to see the good parts. I see what you're doing, Paolo. Hmm. Come on, man. Show us the trussy. What do I gotta do? Do I gotta go to the Patreon to see that? Huh? Give us the lewds, Paolo. I wanna see. I want to see that Shinkusi, if you know what I'm saying. Shinkankusi? Shinkansusi? Sure that not a single piece is misplaced. As an important piece of their workflow, workers use specialized tablets to track each individual part and information about each part so that it properly gets maintained and reassembled in the correct location. 
Only, yeah, only trams. At the same time, smaller parts like bolts and screws are generally replaced with new ones. So before we continue on, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor for this video, Squarespace. If you all don't already know Squarespace, this place literally is just blowing me away. It is a so, so massive. There's just so much space. But I guess it makes sense when you're dealing with so many trains that come through here. They lube that bad boy up. That dirty, dirty. You can see just behind me, they're taking the wheels that off. That dirty the girl got the lubed up. up. Daisha in Japanese is composed of the frame chassis, wheels, axles, and motors. In order for the undercarriage to be fully inspected, each part must be disassembled to separately undergo its own exhaustive testing. As the components are separated, they're sent to diagnostics, and parts like the axles are inspected via ultrasonic sensors, magnetic particles, and fiberscope to ensure it's free from defects while wheels are turned and reprofiled with an accuracy of a tenth of a millimeter. Even the smallest of components, such as the bearings, are inspected. Oh wow, that giant orange crane is used for lifting up the frame! All right, let's see what's going on here. Oh, this is their undercarriage operation inspection room. Once all of the undercarriage components pass their individual inspections. Bro, my horny ass would not make it in the Shinkansen bullet train factory, okay? That's all I'm saying. They're reassembled to make a complete undercarriage, which then undergoes a running test at speeds of 300 kilometers per hour or about 806 miles per hour, the same top speed the Shinkansen would operate on their fastest stretch on the Sanyo line. Hi, can I ask you some questions? Hi. What are you doing? Does it ever fail? What do you do when that happens? So is there anything you need to be really careful about when doing this task? Yeah, make sure it's fucking tight. Make sure that bad girl is tight, dude. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you. Once the automated test has run its course and the undercarriage receives a passing result, it must then undergo a manual inspection in order to move on to the next stage. And this is where all of the disassembled equipment and parts are cleaned and repaired. Ah, so this fucking is kind of tight. Let's see what's behind that door over there. Hey guys, what are you doing? Why do you have to do this? Looking spiffy. This room is where the pantograph gets inspected and maintained. You know, the top part of the train that connects to the electrical power lines? Interestingly, all of the components used for equipment inspection and repair are prepared in advance and a component such as bolts and packaging are preset in a fixed position in dedicated trays. In total, there are about 450 different component kit trays to help manage parts and about 300 unique trays are used in one day. Oh God, I do love the organizing, dude. It's insane. It's insane. The level of organizing that they're demonstrating here is just, oh my fucking lord, dude. Wild shit. Look at this. Even every single tool has their spot. So I'm right in front of the lead Shinkansen train and it's going to be polished right now. After the body is thoroughly cleaned and repaired, it's transferred to the Toso warehouse, body paint. So this giant transparently walled area is where the Shinkansen body gets polished. The Shinkansen is so massive that automated robot arms are used to ensure that the paint is applied evenly. And just before this, the lead car of the Shinkansen receives a specialized automated polishing treatment in this specific area due to its unique aerodynamic shape. The polishing creates a more adhesive surface for the paint application. The Ooh, other goddamn. area that's more equipped for standard sidewalls and roof polishing. Here, it looks like the body and the wheelbase has been reattached. 
This is the Gisaba warehouse, aka assembly area. Here, the newly painted body, undercarriage, and undercarriage equipment are reassembled. Also, any components previously removed from the carriage interior are reinstalled to create one functioning train car. Once all of the work is complete, it's moved to the final departure warehouse. By the way, each train must pass four levels of periodic inspection, with each level becoming more and more exhaustive, so inspections are performed every 48 hours. Then, every 60,000 kilometers, about 45 days. After that, every 600,000 kilometers, about 18 months. And finally, at 1.2 million kilometers, or every 36 months. Which again is the most detailed inspection as it's a complete teardown, repair, and rebuild taking- Wait, what? That's, I don't even understand, dude. What the fuck? No, I mean, is that even necessary at that point? Like, that's literally, dude, they treat this shit. They straight up treat this shit like it's a, I mean, not even passenger aircrafts have this level of inspection, I feel like. I feel like some of these things they don't even do for redundancy, but just a flex on us. Bro, I don't think they think about us at all. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I think they're just on their own shit. You know, they're just vibing on their own. They're not even. They're just living their best damn lives, dude. They found a bunch of people. <laughs> they found a bunch of A-worded people. Who love doing this. <laughs> They're working for free out there. About 14 days to fully complete, and the very inspection that I'm showing you today. The traverser requires two trained workers for operation, one on each end to ensure safety. Today, there are a total of three workers, as one of them is a trainee, being instructed on how to safely operate the vehicle. So this is where the individual carriages are finally joined to form one fully functioning and operational 16 car Shinkansen bullet train. The recoupling process is performed slowly and carefully as the workers make small adjustments by hand to ensure a safe and secure connection. After the train is reconnected, workers reaffix the connecting panels and electrical cables between the carriages. And from here, the Shinkansen must still undergo an additional 1400 tests in 117 different categories to ensure it's working properly and safe for passengers to ride. So they're doing their final inspections right now at the factory and after that the train is gonna leave. As part of the final test, the Shinkansen performs a test run and operates between Hamamatsu and Nagoya. To further ensure a safe and comfortable ride for passengers, the final test includes items such as acceleration, deceleration, stopping, vibration in the cabin, and cabin air pressure and tunnels. Only after fully passing all of these tests is the Shinkansen bullet train reintroduced into operation. So that's how a Shinkansen factory is made in Japan. If you guys like this video, help me out and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos like this... Fuck, dude. Okay, now wait 20 years for California high-speed rail and then compete? Yeah. We're never getting that, dude. I'm sorry. Japan only had five rail derailments, uh, train rail derailments in 2022. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder why. Ha probably has nothing to do with this level. No, there's no... I'm sure this has nothing to do with it. You know what I mean? It's just like the thing is, dude, this level of detail could absolutely be this level of detail could absolutely be implemented in America too. It's just like, we are so hyper-focused on 
what we consider efficiency, that it is unimaginable to put this level of care and and uh, and this this kind of checks at play, bro. We're thinking about we're thinking about lowering the, the number of pilots that need to be in the cockpit at all times in our regular air travel to one. Okay, to one. Like, if you think they, I mean, trains is one thing. It's not like train commutes are not as as utilized as like air travel in a country as large as America, as vast as America. 